Hello my beautiful hammerhead and welcome back to another video. In this one I'm gonna tell you about, of the short stories from the Dombria Chronicles. This time it's from number 17 to 20. Again let's dive in short and sweet hopefully. <laughs> so the first one is Dombria Chronicles 17 The Lady Arcane which of course is Astria Soulbride and yeah, we already talked a lot about her. I'm not gonna recap her story. The only thing we get in this is um, a little bit of her background as she was a child in Hish and um, she was able to, well, catch light in, uh, well, glass and so on. And she lost her father and that was her, um, well, what's the word, motivation to learn magic and such. So uh, the two things she had from her former life are, well, the fascination with souls and how they might be saved. And the second was the legend of the somber paladin. The somber paladin, of course, is, now we know, uh, Ushuran, the summer king. And yeah, well, there are in Gairan, we know that one. Um, the flesh eater cuties are attacking them. Uh, but before that, oh, she has a discussion with one of her uh, evocators. Uh, no, not evocators, I'm sorry. Uh, what was it? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, now you have to suffer with me through this. <laughs> uh, wait, what is he? Knight in Cantor! Ah, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, that. The Flesh Eater Cuties are not really that different from Stormcast Eternals, as they are also trapped in between life and death. Interesting, but the majority of the story is just, oh, fighting, fighting, fighting. And that's it. Flesh Eater courts are dead. But she sees that there is still humanity in them. So, yeah, that's it. Oh, and of course, um, at the end of the story, they are coming and uh, they are stumbling across Dawnbringers. They've met our Dawners in Gairan, which is fascinating. So, then comes Dawnbringer Chronicles number 18, The Mechanisms of Ruin, which is hilarious. We have two Warlock Engineers, one is named Katrick and his rival Kilum. Uh, there is a lot of, uh, well, double words because we have to move fast, fast and there is not a lot of time, time here. Um, well, uh, Katrick is building a weapon that can destroy Quilum's soul because he has a whisker of him. Kilum has built a suit of armor that can um, suck away magic, basically, like Nullstone. And yeah, before they can fight it out, a uh, Worman Lord appears and says, You two stop fighting, fighting. Uh, you will now come with Mimi. <laughs> and the funny thing is that both warlocks are, well, they're falling on their knees and are like, Oh, great Worman Lord, yes, of course, we're going to do what you want. And Catrick had this one. Um, not really accomplice, an acolyte with him, who just died on the spot. It was just too much for the poor rat to see the vermin lord. And yeah, this is hopefully a thing for the future, where we get warlock engineers with suits of armor. That would be awesome. <laughs> but then, yeah, Dombrian Chronicles number 19, The Warning. We have Lord Celestine Gavriel Surcharge and, well, he's taking notes of his adventure and this is basically just a little bit of, oh yeah, we're going uh, towards Hammerhall Aksha on the way we're meeting Ionis Cripborn. He warns us of Wendis that he changed and he's like, oh no, Ionis is wrong. Um, he spends too much time in Shayish and now he got pessimistic. And yeah, well, then they are meeting Vandis after they have 
uh, well, defended Hemerahal Aksha beside Talia Vedra against the Korn followers again. And then he saw, well, damn, Ionis is right. Something is wrong with Vendus. Because Vendus, most of the time, he's like, he's not himself. Only in the heat of battle, he's more like, okay, that's Vandus, but something still is wrong with him. Yeah, then we come to Dombrian Chronicles number 20, Shadows and Lies, which, again, like with Summer Court, uh, short story number 16, is amazing. Where were these short stories before? This here is the first one we got for Dawnbringer Book 5, Shadow of the Crone. Interestingly, Book number 4 isn't even in our hands yet. <laughs> but, yeah, um, we have, of course, a couple of Daughters of Cain, who are, well, talking a little bit. We have Fia Scala and Valaxia, and both of them are like, oh yeah, we're not meeting at the same spot every time. The spies of Morathi are everywhere, and uh, we see behind her lies, and so on. And Velaxia is like, oh yeah, of course, uh, that's why I'm here. I saw what, Morath uh, what Morathi does to traitors, and that she's full of lies, and so on. But in the end, she is a traitor? Basically, because it's a Meluzai, um, but not an Iron Scale. She's um, one of the regular Meluzais that's just slithering around looking for traitors. So one of the higher scaf born. And uh, they are accompanied by some Kinerai, but Crethusa already knew that Velaxia is well, not who she appears to be. She was prepared for all of this. And, well, in the end, the Morathi Cain followers are, well, they're defeated. Uh, some of Crethusa's followers are, of course, dead because Daughters of Cain don't take prisoners, really. Um, not in that kind. But, yeah, this ends really fascinating because Crethusa captures the Melusai, whose real name, by the way, something, uh, what was it, I, I Lesinia? I, I hope I pronounced this correctly, but it's here. And yeah, well, no one knows the true names of the Melusai. Only the Melusai themselves know it. So uh, she and her sisters, the cl her close sisters, know that name. And so Crethusa already shows us that she has some foresight, that she, uh, we have it here, where was it? I'm sorry. Uh, she was, uh, no, uh, here. She knew that the weave of fate cannot be undone. Destiny comes for us all. To fight it, that is foolishness. So there is some kind of foresight here because we know also that she's blind because the crown she has on her head just pushed itself into her eyes. Really interesting. And the last thing we have here is that she drags Ilesinia away. And there are other ways to glean what I need to know about Morathi's plans, because she does not need the Meluzai to talk. Very, very interesting. So the things in Ulgu are heating up. Well, of course, we have still stuff going on in Akshi and Gairan in Hammerhal, and now that Usharan is also active, and we have all the Mortarks in Book 4, apparently, Really, really interesting. So, the last four short stories, um, well, at least the Skaven one and now Crethusas are interesting on what is coming up 
next. So, but then again, thank you so much for watching. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about my predictions on what the Stormcast Eternals are getting in the 4th edition starter box. And the day after that, I'm gonna tell you the same thing, but for the Skaven side. Because we already know, uh, probably, that the Skaven are in the new starter box as the new enemy. But, yeah, up until then, thank you so much for watching. Please leave your thoughts and questions in the comment section down below. I am keen to know what you have to say. And while you're down there, please remember to do all the YouTube stuff because hitting buttons is not only fun. Why? Because that way we can build a bigger community and talk more Warhammer almost every day. And by that I of course mean like and subscribe. <laughs> Up until then, have a great day my friend. Stay fantastic, stay hydrated and I will see you in the next video. Bye, bye.